Is it possible to actually love your gender? For many of us, that might seem very far off or even impossible to achieve that. But many of us do find ways to do so, and it's often through this little thing called gender euphoria. Yeah, so pardon the messy hair. Part of my gender euphoric process is making sure I have clean hair and I was too lazy to let it dry all the way. But what is gender euphoria? Gender euphoria may be defined as something like a feeling of well-being arising from affirmation of one's gender. Or to put it more simply, in layperson terms, gender euphoria is sometimes seen as the opposite of gender dysphoria. But simply, dysphoria is like distress or discomfort, while euphoria is things like elation, joy, happiness, or in psychological terms, increased subjective well-being. Yeah, that last one sounds a bit stuffy, dry, and unexciting, but I bring up psychology because of the huge role that it, along with psychiatry, for better and for worse, has had on the discourse surrounding trans people and our mental health experiences. So much of scientific and popular literature, as you've probably seen, focuses on all of the negative experiences that are associated with being trans. Whether it's, again, gender dysphoria, or if it's discrimination, violence, unemployment, relationship struggles, dating struggles, family struggles, housing struggles, just struggling to exist in the world, whatever it may be. You know, obviously not everything out there, not every story, not every research piece, not every video focuses on the negative, but we're exposed to the negative so much that I wouldn't fault any of you for forgetting that it's actually possible to have a positive relationship with your gender identity, to even have a positive relationship with the fact that you're trans or non-binary or both. Certainly, I've definitely discussed my fair share of negative experiences, and I don't plan to completely gloss over that in the future either. But because we as trans people unfortunately do not have the easiest of lives, I think it's inevitable that we're going to talk about that and sometimes focus on it. I think it can be helpful to talk about the negative experiences from the perspective of here's what happened, here's some suggestions for your transition, in the hopes that things can go smoother to other trans people out there. Life in general is difficult for so many people. Then when you throw being trans or non-binary into the mix, it just complicates things even further. The negative experiences are lived experiences and they're obviously important to discuss, but let's remember to also talk about the positives. I talk about things like self-love, affirmation, the importance of allies and community and support, how affirming physical and mental health access is literally life-changing. I think euphoria is what happens when we're able to get those resources that we need in order to be able to live our authentic lives. You know, regardless of what those resources are, it's about finding whatever we need. For some of us, it's only social stuff. For some of us, it's a combination of social and medical stuff. But when we can finally see how beautiful it is to just be able to be ourselves, that is life-changing and second to none. Is it difficult? Yes. But is it rewarding? Absolutely. Gender euphoria needs to get more attention in the popular media, in healthcare, in psychology, and so on. I think it's important to see trans people being themselves, living their lives, and kicking ass at all of it on top of that. Something that we unfortunately don't see, those positive success stories. So many stories are about trans people after they're brutally murdered, rather than how they excelled at just living and existing as their best selves. To be able to see that it's not only possible to be ourselves, but it's also possible to be happy and successful while doing it, we need more of that. I obviously know that this is currently not the case for many trans people. Rampant discrimination and violence makes it difficult for many of us to truly thrive. But more and more of us have been able to access more and more over time. And this brings me back to an important topic that I've touched on in the past, that of trans representation, and the importance of the representation also being positive and uplifting. Many people get their first exposure to trans people through the media, or at least they think that's their first exposure, because likely many of us have met trans people without knowing that they were trans. 
I therefore believe that continuing to increase positive representation, increasing representation in stories of things like gender euphoria, trans people living life to the fullest, is one way to continue working towards changing people's minds and hearts. We are people just like anyone else, and just like everyone else, we want to thrive and live our lives the way we want to live them. Live them authentically, live them fully, be able to find meaning and connection. Gender euphoria and positive representation can help to further humanize us. You know, we are so much more than our dysphoria. Now, we have probably all had these thoughts at some point, the thoughts around, am I trans or am I trans enough? And I think we often base this off of how much of our experiences look like those of other people, which is often framed in relation to struggles, struggles with things like gender dysphoria. I think this is another area where talking about gender euphoria more could be helpful. It expands the experiences that we associate with trans people and in an also positive way. We might have periods where we don't experience much dysphoria, which is obviously great, but this could make some of us again question whether or not we're trans enough. But then we may think, have I even been experiencing gender euphoria? This can serve as another form of validation and again, a much more positive one at that. Because when you think about it, we often don't transition only to escape pain. That is definitely a big motivator for, for many of us. But we also want to experience a life that is more fulfilling and more joyful. It's not just about escaping the pain, but it's also moving towards something that's more positive. And on this note, I have heard some say that we should use things like gender euphoria instead of or in addition to gender dysphoria when we make decisions about access to trans affirmative mental health care. I both do and don't agree with this. The amount of intentional work that it takes so many of us to embrace our gender in transition often creates an appreciation for our own gender identity that most cisgender people don't have simply because many cisgender people are often able to take it for granted that the gender they were assigned at birth has always aligned with how they identify. I don't know if we would say only trans people experience tra gender euphoria because trans and cis people alike can feel a sense of elation for being affirmed and validated for the gender that they are. But I hypothesize that the majority of those who do experience it are trans. Again, because of the fact that we have to spend so much more time and effort figuring out who we are and finding those pieces that really bring us authenticity and fulfillment. You know, many things that we're not able to take for granted, we have to search those out. I just think on average that that sense of elation, probably much more powerful because of that journey that trans people have to go on. And as I mentioned earlier, I think gender euphoria is a potential way of validating and affirming that someone is indeed trans, just as gender dysphoria might do the same. But we shouldn't have to have measures in place to determine whether or not we're actually trans. You know, being trans in transition looks different for everyone. And this is where I said I don't agree with it being used as a means for access to care. Some people have talked about this. Gender dysphoria has often been used to determine who is or isn't trans, or if someone isn't quite trans enough to receive care. And I wouldn't want the same to happen with gender euphoria. Many of us do experience dysphoria. Many of us likely do experience euphoria from time to time. Just like that feeling of somebody calls you the right name, somebody uses your pronouns and it feels amazing. That's euphoria. All that being said, we need to be able to make informed decisions about our bodies, lives, identities, and so on, but also need to have the autonomy to be able to make informed decisions that we feel are best for us and what we need. So my point here is that we need more positive stories. We need a deeper exploration of this thing called gender euphoria, as long as it isn't used as yet another tool to try to determine who is actually trans. If you think about it, gatekeeping on the base of gender euphoria is a good way to decrease our euphoria if it gets in the way of obtaining the resources we need, kind of contradicting the very existence of euphoria in the first place. So what are your thoughts on gender euphoria? 
Would you say you've experienced it? And if so, what are those experiences that bring you euphoria? And what are your thoughts on increasing the discussion of gender euphoria in the media and even in healthcare and psychology? I'd love to hear it all in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, Tipsy and I love you all and hope you're staying as safe and healthy as you can during these tough times, especially with the holidays coming up since those are tough to say the least for so many of us in this community. If you have not done so already, please be sure to give this a huge thumbs up and click that subscribe button and notification bell. Bye for now.